at the Louisiana University's Marine Consortium event, Ocean.com, in 2018, I joined a tour of the Southern Louisiana Salt Marshes to explore restoration efforts, led by Dr. Denise Reed. One part of the trip served as the inspiration for this addition to my Stitching Hope for the Louisiana Coast project, where I am quilting stories of coastal optimism. This was the first stop of the field trip. Originally, this area was completely underwater, but now this area is becoming stabilized by the dredged material and plant growth. This ground sunk slightly under our feet as we walked around. You can still see the tire tracks of the tractors as this material was pushed and moved. Around the edge is a rim of material higher in elevation, a containment berm to prevent the sediment from being eroded away. In time, this spot will transition to a wetland with a rich fisheries habitat. To tell this story, I decided to use various batik patterned fabrics across a set of four panels. I created the quilt design on my own, keeping the fabric cuts and display simple while letting the fabric designs indicate the physical environments. I chose a glittery white and gray fabric for the borders and binding to complement the batiks while not competing with the blue, green, yellow, and brown colors I used for each square. For my first block, I selected this blue fabric with gold highlights to represent shallow water. On our field trip, we traveled by boat to a location that used to be entirely open water, but now sediments have been brought into the area so that a salt marsh could be quickly established. The sediment volume is brought in as a slurry using a dredge. Enough sand is utilized to bring the sandy surface high enough so it is only flooded by very high tides. There is a containment berm around the outer edge of this new land to keep the new sediments in place. I used the same blue and gold batik fabric to represent the shallow water. The yellow fabric is for the sand slurry that is brought in and is exposed above the water level, while the dark brown represents the berm of higher elevation to contain the sand that was brought in. With time, plants are able to establish and grow although it can take as long as two decades for the nutrient content in the soil to fully develop. Again, the blue and gold fabric represents shallow water. The sandy area now has a green coloration to represent the appearance of vegetation, and the blue for water when there is flooding. The berm is shown as a lighter brown-gold color, representing the settling and compaction of the sediments, which lowers the berm elevation but still high enough to serve as a berm. It continues to take time for the sand to compact, and this area will eventually become flooded more regularly by the tides like the surrounding marshes. This shallow water wetland is not ideal for a fisheries habitat yet, as it is too high or too shallow, but will serve to help stabilize the shore. These fabrics were selected to show more vegetation and water as the sand is now partially submerged. For the back of the quilt, I selected this fabric that looks like mud cracks. The field location we stopped at was filled with mud cracks across the surface, and I spent much time exploring and photographing them. I have a special connection to mud cracks, as my very first undergraduate research experience in my junior year of college focused on studying mud cracks. It was nice to reconnect with this sedimentary structure. Importantly, the cracks here are making room for new plant growth. This is my story of coastal optimism, a story of how humans can dredge sediment from one location in a bayou to another to provide stability in the coastal zone.